Hello everyone! Welcome to JL Learning Film Tutorials. So, for today's objective, explains that a shift in speech context, speech style, speech act, and communicative strategy affects the following. Language form, duration of interaction, relationship of speaker, role and responsibilities of the speaker, message, and delivery. By the way, let me ask you a question. How to communicate successfully in different situations? So, just save your answer. I will be asking you back later. Let's begin with the language form. Are you familiar with the language form? What is your perception in the picture below? Yes, it is the integration of content, form, and use. The overlooked parts of the diagram above represents knowledge of language and successful integration of content, form, and use to understand and transmit messages accordingly. Let's start discussing with the form. It refers to the shape and structure of something. It can also mean the organization, placement, and relationship between things. Language form refers to the so-called surface features of language and how these are arranged. The rules that govern how a particular language features are arranged are the grammar of the language. Language form can be divided into at least two categories that's according to Lane 1988, and they are morphology and syntax. So what is morphology? Morphology examines how words are formed in any particular language. It focuses especially on their internal structure and how their meaning can be altered through the addition of prefixes and suffixes. What is prefixes and suffixes then? Prefixes are the word part added before the root word and the suffixes are the word part added after the root word. A morpher Morphine is the smallest element in the language capable of creating distinction in the meaning. As such, it is central to an understanding of morphology. Then we proceed to syntax. Syntax refers to the rules that govern how a word combines to create meaningful utterances. Morphemes combine to form words, and words combine into phrases, and phrases combine according to set rules into clauses. Though it is spoken a language, there is additional concern with the ways in which sound is connected to meaning. This therefore introduces the third category, which is phonology. Let's revisit the golden rule. It says, Subjects and verbs must agree with one another in number, singular or plural. Thus, if the subject is singular, its verb must also be singular. And if a subject is plural, its verb must also be plural. Let us go through some of the subject-verb agreement rules. Number 1. If the subject is singular, the verb must be singular too. Look at examples. He walks every day. He is the subject and it is singular, thus it needs a singular verb, which is walks. Look at example number two. Mario, Mario eats ice cream. Mario is singular, thus it needs singular verb, which is eats. Rule number two. If the subject is plural, the verb must be also plural. Example, they walk every day. They is plural and walk is also plural. Another, the wolves hunt for food. Wolves is now the subject which is plural and the word verb is hunt which is plural. When the subject of the sentence is composed of two or more nouns or pronouns connected by end, always use 
a plural form. Example, the SHS student and the teachers write every day. Sis, it is composed of two or more nouns, which is as SHS student and teacher. Thus, it takes a plural verb, which is write. Then we have the fourth. When there is one subject and more than one verb, the verbs throughout the sentence must agree with the subject. Say, for example, Interviews are one way to collect data and permit researchers to gain an in-depth understanding of the participants. The given example, our subject is interviews, which is plural. Thus, it takes a plural verb, R and permit. Then we have rule number five. When the phrase comes between the subject and the verb, remember that the verb still agrees with the subject not the noun or pronoun in the phrase following the subject of the sentence. Look at the example. The learner, as well as the teacher, is excited. Why in a sentence we use is, where in fact there is teachers before it, because our main subject is the learner, not the teacher. It is just a phrase that comes between the subject and the verb. Therefore, we will be focusing on its subject, which is learner, and that is singular, therefore it takes a singular verb, which is S. Another example. The focus of the interviews was nine purposefully selected participants. In the given example, our subject is focus, and it is singular. So, it takes a singular verb, which is was. Get me? Sixth rule. When two or more singular nouns or pronouns are connected by or or nor, use always a singular verb. Take for example, the chairperson or the CEO approves the proposal before proceeding. So the given example, our verb our noun, rather, is the chairperson or the CEO with the use of OR. Even if there are two nouns there stated, because of the use of OR, we will still use a singular form of verb, which is APPROVES. Then we have the seventh. When a compound subject contains both singular and a plural noun or pronoun joined by OR or NOR, the verb should agree with the part of the subject that is closest to the verb. Take note, closest to the verb. This is also called the rule of proximity. Look at example. The student or the committee members write every day. So, even if there is a... Even if the subjects are... Oh, is this joined by or since we are going to follow or we're going to follow on the closest subject to the verb which is members and members is plural therefore it takes a plural verb which is right another example the committee members or the student writes every day. Remember that the rule says that even if you are, even if the noun or the plural noun is joined by or or nor, the verb should always agree with the part, the subject that is closest to the verb. Now, the given example, the closest a noun to the verb writes is student and student is singular therefore it takes a singular verb which is writes and we have the eighth one the words and phrases with use of each each one either neither everyone everybody anyone anybody nobody somebody someone and no 
noun are singular and require a singular verb. Take an example. Each of the participants was willing to be recorded. So as you have observed in a given example, with the use of each of the participants, even if there is S in the noun participants, we will stick to the rule that says that with the use of those written phrases like each and etc., it should follow a singular verb. Therefore, we'll use was willing to be recorded. Neither. Neither alternative hypothesis was accepted. So with the use of neither, it is always singular. Therefore, we'll use a singular verb, which is was. Then we have the ninth. Uncountable nouns always take a singular verb. Take for example, education is the key to success. Education is singular, therefore it takes singular verb. And education is uncountable nouns. We cannot count education, right? Neither. Diabetes affects many people around the world. Diabetes is singular and it's uncountable. We cannot count it. Therefore, it takes a singular verb which is a face. Another one. The information obtained from the company was relevant to include in the study. So the information is uncountable noun. We cannot count the information. Therefore, it takes a singular verb which is was. And the last example. The research I obtained on the topic was inadequate. The subject is to research and still uncountable noun, therefore it takes a su singular subject, a singular verb rather, which is was. We have the third rule. Some countable nouns in English such as earnings, goods, odds, surroundings, process, contents, and valuables only have a plural form and take a plural verb. Look at the example. The earnings for this day surpass expectations. So with the noun, the earnings, it is countable. We can count how much we earn for the day. Therefore, it takes a plural verb, which is surpass. Another, the proceeds from the caravan go to the support of the homeless population in the city. The process is countable, therefore it takes a plural verb which is go. And the next one, locally produced goods have the benefits for shorter supply chain. Locally produced goods, that is countable. The goods can be counted, so we will use have as a plural verb. In a sentence beginning with the there is or there are, the subject follows the verb. Since there is not the subject, the verb agrees with what follows the verb. Make an example. There is little administrative support. So there is not a subject. Uh, always remember the one. The subject there or the noun is the word administrative support and it is singular therefore it takes a singular verb which is s another example there are many factors affecting teacher retention factors the noun is factors therefore it takes a plural verb which is r you understand do you understand of course, I know. Then we have the last one. Collective nouns are words that imply more than one person, but are considered singular and take a singular verb. Some examples are group, team, community, family, and class. An example, the group meets every week. So the group is singular, therefore it takes a singular verb, which is Meets. Another example, the committee agrees on equality of writing. The noun is the committee and it should take a singular verb which is agree. However, 
the plural verb is used if the focus is on the individuals in the group. This is much less common. Look at the example. The committee participate on various volunteer activities in their private lives. The word their committee refers to the individual member of the committee. Therefore, it takes a plural verb. So, those are some of uh, the different subject verb agreements that uh, we should always remember as we are going to form sentences. Remember that grammar is everything when you're going to converse with other people. Phonology examines other surface features of speech, such as intonation, stress, and pausing. Then we have use. Use is a typically thought of as having two aspects. The function. Some examples include transmitting ideas, sharing information, passing messages, telling stories to make someone laugh, Coming down an anxious person, expressing love. What is context? Context refers to how people both understand and choose from among alternative linguistic forms in order to reach the same or different goals according to Harris in 2008. Take for example, if you want someone to close the door, perhaps because there is a drought and I'm getting cold. I could say any of the following. Shut the door. Would you mind shutting the door, please? Are you going to shut the door? Were you born in a field? Now, each may serve the purpose of getting the door closed, but they clearly carry different interactional meanings. How do they respond it to? May be influenced by such things as the social status of the participants, the degree of intimacy between them, shared knowledge, and so on. What is this pragmatics, by the way? Pragmatics is the study of the use of language in context. It is a subfield of linguistics which studies how people comprehend and produce communicative acts in the real world speech situations, usually in a conversation. It considers the participants' knowledge about such things as social distance, social status between the speakers, cultural knowledge such as politeness, and both their explicit and implicit linguistics knowledge. The ability In such situation, we also differ our style. We also shift our style of conversation depending on the degree of formality. Let's try to consider following a tutor and says, Why us a student? Would you pass the sandwiches? What do you think of the two is more formal? Is it number one or number two? The two utterances are quite distinct in terms of their grammar, vocabulary, and even pronunciation. The first is language. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Cordy, and even I am not so more familiar with it, it is a fairly common feature that the more standardized language tends to be spoken in a formal setting. What is the relevance of style shifting? So what is language form? Language form refers to the formality or the informality of the language used and it Talking with a lawyer, a doctor, or even with your teacher often creates formal ambience and communication. Informal language Then we have the second the second one which is duration of interaction when we're going to a certain conversation there is always duration of interaction then we have relationship of speaker this refers to the speech style used by the speaker suited to his or her relationship 
Intimate style, the speaker talks to family members, best friends, or romantic partners. This may compromise private conversation or personal interaction. This is usually the most informal style of communication. Then we have Frozen. Frozen, the speaker addresses an audience in a formal gathering such as ceremonial events, Eucharistic celebration, or even court hearings. The style is set or fixed and thus it rarely or never changes. Udes feedback is not required for this. So this is really the most formal type of communication. Then we have the next one which is role and responsibility of a speaker. What is the role and responsibility of a speaker? Responsibility. The speaker the speaker may be a person who gives the information in additional knowledge to the other person. Then we have message. This involves the content of the message. The message may be fed. Then we have delivery. This refers to the manner of delivering involving verbal and nonverbal cues made by the speaker. This is classified into extemporaneous, impromptu, memorite. They explain shortly how shift in speech context, speech style, speech act, and communicative strategy affects the following. Therefore, from our discussion earlier, it is clear that the following elements are affected by shift in communicative processes. Language form which could shift from formal to informal and vice versa depending on the situation. The duration or the length of communication which could be shortened or lightened depending on how the conversation will be maintained. The relationship of speaker to the receiver of the message that could be intimate, frozen, consultative, casual, or formal. Thank you.